Uh, today we have the privilege of witnessing three baptisms. Um, Elisa Unoki, Karen Chan, and Doug Meerdink are going to be declaring their faith and trust in Jesus Christ as their Savior through water baptism. So let me just take a few moments to share and explain what water baptism is. Okay? So whenever someone places their faith and trust in Christ's sacrificial death as payment for their sins, they are saved. Uh, that is, they are saved from having to bear the wrath of God on themselves. They are saved because Jesus has borne the wrath of God for them on their behalf. This is what Romans 5, 8 through 9 says. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? So literally, God saves us from God. God's love and mercy saves us from God's holy wrath against sin. And he does it by bearing the penalty for that sin upon himself through Christ our Lord. Now, Romans 6, 3 through 4 says this, Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. So let me um, just give you four things that baptism symbolizes, two of which fall out of this verse. Number one is baptism symbolizes our union with Christ's death, okay? In this verse, it tells us that we are united with Christ in his death, so we identify with him when he died, we died, when we place our faith and trust in Christ. And the second thing this verse tells us is that water baptism symbolizes our new resurrection life. That just as Christ was raised from the dead, so too we will be raised and we have a new life now. Even in this life now, we have a new life that God wants for us. There's a third symbol of baptism, and that is that water baptism symbolizes cleansing from sin. In Acts 22, 16, it says, when Paul was converted, and now what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, and wash, away, wash your sins away, calling on his name. Now, because God the Son accomplishes our salvation and God the Holy Spirit applies it to our individual lives, a fourth symbol is that water baptism symbolizes the baptism with the Holy Spirit that happens at our conversion. In other words, water baptism is the visible symbol, it's a visible picture of what the Holy Spirit has accomplished spiritually. Just consider all of the different things that the Holy Spirit has done for us at our conversion. We must be born of the Spirit to enter the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit makes us children of God. The Holy Spirit circumcises our hearts. The Holy Spirit gives us life. The Holy Spirit sanctifies us and justifies us. The Holy Spirit washes and renews us at our rebirth. The Holy Spirit is the seal that we are owned by God and is the guarantee of our future inheritance. The Holy Spirit permanently dwells in every believer. The Holy Spirit unites us with all believers in Christ's church. The Holy Spirit is the power that will raise us from the dead. All of these things the Holy Spirit does. It's the Holy Spirit, he applies all of Christ's work so when we think of salvation, we think of the work of Christ, what he's done for us, and how the Holy Spirit takes that work and applies it to every believer. And that's why we need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's why at our conversion, we are considered to be having baptized with the Holy Spirit because this is what the Holy Spirit has done for us when we are saved. And that's why also in Ephesians 4, 4 through 6, it says there's one body and one spirit. Just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. 
one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. You see, if water baptism was separate from spirit baptism, there would be two baptisms, water and spirit. But this verse tells us there's one baptism. There's the Holy Spirit's baptism, and the symbol of that, water baptism. And so today we're going to come and celebrate the great work of God that he's done in bringing these three to himself. And as we're doing that, uh, we are celebrating with them, but also as we're observing and watching and listening to their testimony, for those of us who have received Jesus as our Lord and Savior and have not yet been baptized, I want to encourage you. Because I think that through their baptism and their testimony, if you're listening carefully, I think you should also recognize that if you have received Christ as your Savior, you too should walk in obedience. You too should be baptized. The biblical model was this. You receive the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and at that time, when you open up your heart, you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, and then you should follow that up with the symbol of baptism, water baptism. And so I want to encourage you, if Jesus has saved you, then be water baptized. 